my name is Alicia Birnbaum. I am with Women in Film and Television in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I am here with Sarah Jane Potts Hi. from <laughs> Heart of a Dragon. And we're just going to have a little woman-to-woman -woman casual conversation about <laughs> Sarah. Why don't we start out by just sort of sharing with the viewers um, what the film is about in your, in your words. Basically, the film is about Rick Hansen and his Man in Motion tour that happened 25 years ago when he decided crazily to push himself across 34 countries of the world, across mm. four continents, in his wheelchair. And it took him two years and he wanted to do it to raise awareness and raise funding for spinal cord research and injuries. Excellent. So that's basically what the story kind of is about. And where, you, where, where our film starts is 500 days in okay. to the tour when they got to Beijing in China. Yeah, and you actually filmed in Beijing as yeah. well, which is really The whole amazing. thing, I filmed the whole thing in China. How did you actually film in that heat? Because <laughs> Beijing and China are like 100% humidity. Mm. And it, I understand. It, well, and it was yeah. the end of August. We filmed, we, we filmed this speech film in 14 days. Um, and we had four full days on the Great Wall. It was, it was ins insanely hot. I, I, you know, I was quite thankful for it because I think it made us, it made us more aware and have more empathy with what they felt and what they really yeah. went through. And as an actor, if you're there and you're hot and you're exhausted yeah. and you're emotionally drained, it's far easier to play that than when you've been pampered in a hotel and then you're on a set and people are bringing you cups of tea and it's all very nice and you're very spoiled. And, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it was kind of difficult because the Great Wall is so exposed. There's no shade yeah. whatsoever and everyone had to chip in and carry equipment and everything that we had to get up the wall in the morning we get there and we could maybe walk for 30 minutes to get to the spot where they wanted to film for that day so everybody would get loaded up like a pack horse and they'd be like okay on your way <laughs> like okay so you actually had wall. to climb up yep carrying That's umbrellas cool. and camera boxes and costumes and makeup bags and yeah everybody everybody did something that's awesome. So. That's really good. It was a huge team effort, just mm. like it was when Rick Hansen was actually there. Um, the other interesting thing was that you filmed with your brother. I did, yeah. And that was must have been. I thought that was really cool because I don't think very many people get to film with their actual family. No, I, I'm very, very close to my brother. We have been all our lives. There's only me and him. There's no other brothers or sisters. When I first met Michael to talk about Amanda and playing Amanda, he talked very much about how these people on this tour became a family and how they had an unspoken dialogue and an understanding of each other that didn't, that you don't get unless you've spent a lot of time with people. And he was kind of like, he was like a safety blanket for me there because it was rough and my little boy was very small at the time and I was away from him and he knew when I was getting stressed and he, you know, when somebody knows you that well, it's, it's very easy for them to kind of help you out. My mum, for, for most of her, working life um, has been like a nursery nurse for mentally handicapped children and their ages range from 6 to 17 so and every summer that we had off school she would always usually bring one of her kids home and take care of them in our house so you kind of grow up with more of an insight and an understanding into what it's like to live with somebody with a mental or physical disability. Exactly. I hope that message comes across. That they, it was him, none of it, Don, Lee, Tim, Amanda, none of them saw him as disabled. He saw himself as disabled. I mean, he even refers to himself as a cripple in mm. the film. When they get to the stairs and he realizes that at the start of where they're starting off on the wall of China, there's a ton of stairs. And yeah. he's like, those stairs aren't supposed to be there. Mm and his team go, well, we can carry you up the stairs, we can get you up to where you need to start, and then you can go. And he says, no, what, what kind of message is that, is that going to show the world? And yeah. Don says that you're human. And he says, no, it's going to show them that I'm a cripple. Let's talk about um, Michael French, who was the director. Yeah. And he was also there, actually, like 24 years ago, during the actual Man in Motion yeah. tour with Rick. I think Michael owns this story with his heart. And it was very evident when I first met him, when I first read the script. I just met a man that was so passionate about 
making this project work. It was all his energy, he was, his whole energy was that story. He was very gracious and very trusting in letting us do our own thing and he kept saying that's why I cast you because you know this story. Yeah. I hear a lot about, from actors and other people about this, there's like the actor's director and then there's mm. like, there's different kinds of director. I, I think, I think when you say an actor's director it just sort of really translates as they have more of an understanding about life and yeah. about themselves because he he listen, he, she, they, they listen, they take on board, they don't judge, they very rarely label things, and then that's a joy. Obviously the, um, the film is, it focuses a lot on athletics and being um, active mentally, physically. Mm -hmm. and I was curious to know if being athletic is something that you do outside of acting, is that something that's important to you? What, what else really do you important. Like to do? I very much agree with healthy body, healthy mind. I mean, training at the moment, I'm gonna try and do the marathon next year. Ooh. And I really want to do a triathlon. Crazy, stupid of me, I know, but there you go. I like to challenge myself. I like to challenge myself physically. And I think it keeps you young in your head. Yeah. So obviously we get to look forward to Heart of Sarah Jane in a couple. <laughs> after she does the marathon, right, we'll follow her. Yeah, but her not in a wheelchair. Then... Can you even imagine? When I'm, when I'm running and I'm really, really tired, I'm thinking I can't, I can't do this last mile. I do think of Rick Hansen and I think, no, you can't even complain. I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really special. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the film. Oh, I hope you like it. And, I uh, hope everybody goes to see it, because you should, it's important. So um, make sure to look out for Sarah Jane in um, everything else that she does. Thanks for tuning in. Growing up, you don't see the writing on the wall. Oh. Many special thanks to Ken McIntyre at CNC Communications and Angelina Cantata at Curly Tail Pictures.